Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today is Tuesday, which means I'm doing art around the world, and it is the month of September, which means I'm doing the country of Portugal. Now, I want to do an artist spotlight today about an artist named Paula Rego, and some of her art depicts scenes and pictures that you may find very uncomfortable, and it deals with the topic of abortion. So if that is not something you are interested in hearing about, learning about, seeing about, or hearing me talk about it, please exit out of this video. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. The reason I want to talk about her is because I want to talk about art as it pertains to making an impact on a community, on a country, on a group of people. And art can be that. Art can be many, many things. It can be personal and it can be impactful. And I want to start off looking at some of her other art and then we will delve into that um, topic and subject matter that she covered with her art. Now, she was born in 1935 in Lisbon, Portugal. And she began to draw at the age of four. And a year later, her family kind of divided and her parents ended up going to the United Kingdom. And she was left behind in the care of her grandmother and some maids. And in that, they sort of taught her a bunch of fairy tales and stories. And this became very impactful to her life, to her art. She wanted to include some of these things. She did some fairy tales of certain ones um, like Snow White. You're going to see a lot of other images in here where she showed sort of Snow White aging where she covered these different characters. And in her life, uh, there were many things that sort of impacted the subject matter. So this is one of them. And when she was older, she went to an art college. Um, she wanted to try and go to the Chelsea School of Art. And she ended up going... Um, Let's see, she ended up going to a different school and she fell in love with a man that was already married. Now the only reason why this is relevant to her art is because when they talked, when she got pregnant from him, he said if she kept the baby that he would leave her and she did not want him to leave her. So over her lifetime, she had several abortions. Now this impacted her art. This became something that was relevant to her and her life, and she wanted to discuss it. And she wanted to put it in her art and make it something that became part of the conversation. Now, eventually, they would marry. They would have three children together. But something happened in Portugal, and this is sort of the crux of the situation. There was um, sort of a referendum to be more lenient about abortion rights in the country of Portugal, and it wasn't passed. And that, that affected her because of her personal experience. And so she began doing these pastels, and she did a series of 10 pastels, and they're called Untitled the Abortion Series. And there's some of them here, hold on. Where she wanted to show women, not as victims, but as sort of taking charge of their own life in different stages of having an abortion. Now she realized that this affects people of lower income disproportionately of people of higher income because people of higher income could still go out of the country and have an abortion done. And 
she wanted to sort of show people, here's a triptych she did in various stages, of what that honestly looks like, regardless of legality. There will always be someone that may need an abortion, whether it's legal or not. And I want to say someone instead of women, because for folks that don't identify or folks that are transgender, everybody's included in this conversation of folks that need an abortion. So this is a medical right, in my opinion, and we're all entitled to our own. And she did these huge, these 10 pastels in Lisbon, and there were etchings from the series so these works could be reproduced. And they ended up in several Portuguese newspapers. Now, there's no blood, there's no gore, there's no, like, full-on nudity shots here. It's just various stages of before process, in process, after process, what that actually looks like for some folks that have had an abortion. Now, this series of pastels was credited by many people, including the president of Portugal at the time, with influencing people to campaign for a second referendum. And the second referendum happened in 2007, and it legalized abortion in Portugal. It loosened up a bunch of those laws that were very, very strict on the rights of folks. And I think this is very, very important to talk about. Um, you know, her work is very uncompromising. Uh, the gaze, she's looking, you know, she's looking right at somebody in the room. Some of these are looking right at you, looking at them. And that's kind of important. <laughs> it's not a shame thing. It's just a fact of life thing. And that's important. Um... Her work, her work though, you know, it's, this piece is called Angel. <laughs> and she has a sword and is she attacking? Is she defending? I love her work. I love her work. I love her stance for rights, for human rights, for people's rights. Um, I get that this topic is very, very controversial. I get that there are many people that won't like this or enjoy this. This isn't really the type of art you hang in your kitchen. That's not what this art is for. This art is for a conversation and this art is credited with changing a law for rights for people in an entire country. And I think that goes a long way. I think that's absolutely amazing. So her work can be seen in several places. Um, the Tate has a bunch of her pieces. Um, let's see. Uh, 43 works are at the British Council. She has 10 works in the Art Council of England, and then 48 works are at the Tate Gallery London. Um, she revised a story of Snow White, where Snow White is aging and sort of dealing with the topic of aging and getting older. Here she is in her studio. She passed away this year. She passed away three months ago um, at the age of 87. And I just think folks that stand up for rights, that give their art meaning and purpose, are just absolutely phenomenal. If you want to know more about her influences, her life, the decisions that sort of brought about a bunch of these art pieces. I will link a bunch of different articles. Um, because she passed away this year, there are a bunch of sort of retrospective things about her that are really great. I will link an interview. Um, it's four minutes. I'm not sure if there are closed captionings or not. Um, I haven't listened to it yet. It's only four minutes. I mean, she's just not afraid to be uncomfortable. And I think the use of the way she centers the subject matter, 
color, the composition, the form, I think is incredibly powerful to get the message across that she wants to get across. You know? I think these are absolutely stunning. Um, in 2004, she produced a set of stamps for the Royal Mail. They were uh, Jane Eyre stamps. Um, in 2017, there was a BBC documentary that one of her son, her son put together, and it was called Paula Rego Secrets and Stories. I'm not sure if I can find that. If I can find something on that, I will link it. Here she is. Eee, I love her smile. And... Um, at the time of her death, she was being represented by the Victoria Miro Gallery and the Christia Roberts Gallery. So she had full representation by galleries. Um, and her work is just incredible. And she had so many solo exhibitions and shows and she's in all these catalogs and books. And I just think she is someone who... You know, she received a bunch of awards. She got, in 2011, she was awarded an honorary doctorate by the University of Lisbon. And she was just recognized by a bunch of people because of her work. Because she was willing to put it out there and have some of the toughest, like, conversations with her art. With her art pieces. And it's important. It's important that there are artists like this that aren't afraid to do that to speak up. And I just wanted to share this with you. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.